Representative Allen Court. And is Representative Health still here? I'm sorry, I missed this. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Steve Valancourt. I represent Manchester Ward 8. I'm here to speak in favor of the bill. And uh, the last hour I've spent in here, it's been very enlightening. I've learned a great deal today. This has been some of the best testimony I've ever heard. Um, I've also learned that apparently uh, people can go in on your computer after they've sent you stuff and see if you've opened it, which is uh, an indication that Big Brother is not that far away. It's kind of frightening. Um, I want to speak not as a scientist. I'm not a scientist. I don't understand how science works, but I do respect it. And I think today we're on the cusp of morality and science, and that's an important place to be. The evolution of this bill is also interesting. Uh, I sponsored this legislation almost 10 years ago when it was defeated. The Attorney General's office spoke about it being introduced before and being defeated. But of course, you realize that the reason it's before the Senate now is because it passed the House. When I introduced it about 10 years ago, it was defeated by 100 votes or so. A couple of years ago, it was defeated by a handful of votes. This time, it passed, not by a few votes, but by almost 100 votes. It passed by bipartisan support. I believe 45 Republicans, including some of the most conservative people in this House, supported this. So this has tremendous support. The sponsors of this bill deserve a tremendous amount of credit for bringing it into shape. As you know, 13 other states have done things like this, and the world hasn't ended there. So I would urge you not to be convinced by a lot of the smoke that has come forth on this bill to try to cloud the issue. I'm frankly surprised that the Attorney General would send somebody here to spread misinformation. And it seems to me it has to be deliberate when she tells you how much one of these plants will produce. I think she's off by about a factor of 100, yes. because the best scientific evidence is that a plant produces about four ounces. Miracle growth. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have her come and work on some of those tomatoes I bought uh, on TV. Uh, we're told that you might over-medicate. That's just red herring. That's smoke and mirrors as well. We're told that uh, this is unproven. However, at the same time, they say we don't need this because there's a Marinol substance which is proven to be effective. So you can't have it both ways. Either there's a substance that's proven to be effective or there's not. This is about morality. Uh, somebody earlier quoted about the law and how laws should be based on people's willingness to obey them. I like to quote a great scientist, Albert Einstein, who said that uh, there's nothing more harmful to society than promoting laws which cannot be enforced. I used it on the 65 mile an hour speed limit bill. But it gets us to heart, the heart of the issue. Should we have laws which are so universally ignored? When as, I, as marijuana, when I was on the Ways and Means Committee, we learned that about 20% of people smoke cigarettes in this state, maybe a little down now. And at the same time, we got indications that about 10%, I don't know where they got this, but 10% of New Hampshire residents smoke marijuana. So half as many people as smoke cigarettes are smoking this illegal substance, which tells you that this is a substance which is going to be available for people to get. Don't ask me how. I don't know. But probably your sons and daughters can tell you how it's easily available. So, so don't be fooled by that. I think the most important point that was made today is that as far as other substances are concerned, this is more benign. If it can be helpful, fine. My mother died a terrible death about 25 years ago after abusing her body with alcohol and tobacco for a long time. She died of cancer of the liver and cancer of the intestine. And as uh, Representative Callie Pitts noted, if there is anything I could have done to alleviate the suffering when she was on these medications that knocked her out completely, if this would have helped her, I would have said, God bless the people that make this and grow it. It would have been a benefit. I don't see anything wrong with this in a just and in a moral society we should go toward this means. And I urge you to do what the rest of the legislature has done, show that we're in an evolutionary process and that we change. Change is a wonderful thing, and we're on the cusp of some tremendous changes. So I wholeheartedly endorse this and ask you to make it. Could it be unanimous? Thank you. Thank you very much. Claire <laughs> okay. um, Evil. 
Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Claire Evil. I'm the Executive Director of the National Civil Liberties Union. And despite the length and the breadth of this hearing, what the Senate has before it is a very simple bill. The people who have come here to describe their use of an illegal substance ought not to be criminalized. They are your constituents, they are your neighbors, and they are your friends. But they are treated as criminals under current New Hampshire law. You have the power to change that, and you should. The history of marijuana in this country is an interesting one. It was legal, fully legal, until 1937. It became illegal after the 21st Amendment repealed the 18th when the liquor distributors discovered that they had lost three million of their customers who switched from what was illegal alcohol to legal marijuana. And they created as a political piece, Reefer Madness, and for those of you old enough to remember it, it it's worth a review. They gave it to Congress to convince Congress that the demon weed was the, the path to hell and that it need to, needed to be criminalized, but it was a marketing tool to put alcohol back in the homes of the people who were legally smoking marijuana. That's the history of the, the demonization of marijuana. But what you have here is it's complete smokescreen. This is not a legalization bill. That's already been to the House this year, and it was defeated. But as Representative Valancourt pointed out, this bill passed overwhelmingly because the House recognized, as I hope the Senate will, that you are talking about your constituents who lead good and noble lives, who observe the law and value the law, but they value their lives more, and they <coughs> resort to a substance that gives them ease and gives them the ability to continue when no other substance does. It is a very simple process. You've heard about the FDA, and I think, bless the medical student who came up from, from Dartmouth, down from Dartmouth, I guess, because um, the process of having something approved by the FDA is all about money. It's not about the safety of the drug. Some of you are old enough, as I am, to remember thalidomide. We're not talking about the necessity of drug safety. We are talking about being able to get a patent on a particular prescriptive medicine which since it is a natural product, as she pointed out, you cannot do. You have heard that the drug laws in the state will be compromised if you decriminalize marijuana for medical use. Our neighbors in Maine and our neighbors in Vermont have not found that to be the case, nor have the other 12 states that have decriminalized marijuana for medical use. The issue that you're facing is a simple one, and Attorney General Holder made it simpler still. He said that the federal government will not enter any state to prosecute if the state laws permit the use of medical marijuana. Now granted, he's not going to be Attorney General for the rest of our lives, but he's there probably for four years and maybe for eight. And being Irish, I don't gamble, but I do predict sometimes. <laughs> and it is my belief that by 2016, there will be a majority of the states of the United States that have approved marijuana for medical use. I would like New Hampshire to be lucky 14. And I thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Yeah, I was a